after sin, you know, and men began to multiply on the face of the earth, that's probably when you would begin to see other religions potentially form, right? People who don't want to listen to God, people who don't want to obey God. And of course, God ended up wiping out the whole earth with a flood other than Noah and his family. But from that point forward, after the flood, you still end up getting, you have Noah who knows God, and we start back over again with one religion. And then as people populate and continue to grow, you start having these other ones. And there's religions out there like uh, Hinduism is one of the big ones. We'll try to tell you, oh, Hinduism is, is the oldest, you know, religion in the world. And they'll try to tell you it's the oldest one. And they say, well, because Christianity only goes back 2,000 years. Well, no. I mean, yeah, under the name of Christianity, when the Savior came, sure, you can start that with Jesus Christ, but the religion or the God that we worship is the same God. There have been some changes made, but it's still ultimately the same religion going all the way back through history. So no, Hinduism isn't the oldest religion. It was preceded by the religion that Adam and Eve held to. It was religion that, that started with, hey, their salvation when they sinned was by grace through faith. When they spiritually died in that day in the garden, when they took of the fruit and ate that, that, that which they weren't supposed to eat, God made them coats of skins to cover themselves with, to cover their sin, to cover their shame, you know, as a foreshadowing of what was going to come in the future the lamb that was to be slain, the sacrifice that was to be made. Uh, and I don't want to get all into the gospel, but what we see throughout history, though, is religions that form, that are patterned after the true religion, but then with their own perversions and corruptions and kind of changing things along the way. And, and you know, some are way more perverted than others. But it's no surprise when you start seeing a lot of the similarities. And people will, will misconstrue the evidence right? People say, oh, well, there's so many similarities between this religion and Christianity that, you know, Christianity has spawned off of this other religion. No, these other religions got their beliefs off of Christianity, off of the true religion. And uh, this is why you'll see other trinities in pagan religions. You'll see a lot of other religions have the concept of like a triune God or, or you know, maybe plural gods or something that will that's that's loosely you know fits a trinity like we have in uh, Christianity. That's also why you'll see saviors in other religions that was similar to, to features of Jesus Christ. That's why you're going to see a lot of these other things, and but that's also why where I believe human child sacrifice came from. I believe even this story with Abraham, we don't have much information other than the flood. Of, of other religions prior to Abraham, or even just, just kind of recorded history in the Bible of prior to Abraham. But we do have this pivotal story of God commanding Abraham to go and offer up Isaac, his beloved, his only beloved son, right, to the Lord. Now, when people who are unbelievers, who don't believe the Lord, but they want to set up their own idols and make their own religion, they could hear about this story and then they say, wow, that is, that is one of the greatest things that a person can ever do is to offer up their child as a sacrifice to God. And without the understanding of what it's all about and without understanding this story, I can see where people might go down that path in a false religion, in, in their own twisted view, because they don't want to believe the God of the Bible, but they do believe in a God in general. And they say, oh, no, no, we're going we're gonna to do that. Because it's hard for us to imagine, like, who could, you know, who's going to offer up and, and let your child pass through the fire? You know, you think that that's a really cold-hearted person, but people did that. Now, the people that did that were really wicked, but they had a twisted, warped view on right and wrong and what they should be doing and how they should worship God, who they believe to be God. And I think some of this can start from a story like this in Scripture. 
Now, it doesn't mean that, that God is the author of that evil that people have done. Look, the Bible says in Jeremiah 32, verse 34, But they set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, to defile it. And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech. And his Bible says this, Which I commanded them not. He's saying, I didn't command them to do that. Neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. He's saying, that didn't even come, the thought didn't even cross my mind for them to start passing their children through the fire unto Molech. He said, that's not something I ever wanted them to do, intended for them to do, but they did it anyways. Leviticus 18.21 says, And thou shalt not let any of the, thy seed... Pass through the fire to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. So, God is not, first of all, God is not in favor of human sacrifice, of child sacrifice. We have a special story in the book of Genesis about Abraham and what it really has to do with, and we're going to get into this a little bit later. We're going to dig through Genesis chapter 22 and just cover all the meaning behind it, because there's a lot of meaning. It's a picture of, of Jesus Christ coming. It's a picture of the gospel. We're going to see why that was important. This isn't just some standing thing that people should just be offering up their children as a sacrifice unto God.